previously on Racing Namibia. So we drove about a half hour on the highway, then hopped in some four x four vehicles, and we've arrived here at camp. And this is actually a new camp location. The wind's starting to die down now a little bit, but it's expected to pick up again for the first couple of days of the course. I'd arrived in Namibia a week earlier before making my way to camp to prepare for the start of the Namib Desert Race, part of Racing the Planet's Four Desert Series. Today, we'd finally begin our adventure on stage one of six, as we run 250 kilometers over the next seven days across one of the oldest deserts in the world. Let me. How did you sleep? Did you sleep okay? I sleep okay. I sleep okay. I I miss my daughters. Oh, and uh, yeah. today I run for my daughters today. Yeah. When the, I I have a pain, tried. I, I touch my my fingers. Is my daughters and my wife is, yeah, more strong. Yeah, more strong. <laughs> da morena do beijo da morena Okay, so it's Sunday morning. We've got a, about a half an hour before our pre-race briefing and then we're getting started at 8 o'clock. Where do these go, forwards or back? <laughs> Good morning, everybody! Good morning! Good morning, Olivia! After two nights in this camp, it's been delightful, but I bet you all can't wait to get moving. I know I certainly can't wait to get out on the course. And in 28 minutes, that's all about to start. Don't be deceived by this. This is normal when we're close to the coast. This is the mist coming off the sea. Yesterday it burnt off by about 9 o'clock. Today it looks like it might be similar. You must leave this morning with 1.5 litres of water, so please fill up your bottles before you leave. Leaving Camp 1, the first stage of the race will take us through the Swakop River on mostly soft sand. Climbing out of the riverbed, we'll then run along a section of harder packed sand and rocks before reaching Camp 2 at the site of an old ostrich farm.
All right, so the race has finally started. It's quite cool, it's probably in the high teens. It's definitely gonna get warmer today when this fog burns off though. So I guess the name of the game is to get some faster running in now before it gets too hot. What's up? You okay? You good? Right behind you, right behind you. All right, all right. My name is Mabasa Mbata Pasango and I'm from Zimbabwe. I started getting involved in um, Raising the Planet in 2017 where I was a volunteer, like doing their satellites, you know, making sure that, you know, they have internet connections to, to upload into the internet. And I saw this 78-year-old gentleman finishing the, the race and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm wasting away my life. Let me get into this, you know, routine of running, training, lower my, my weight. You know, seeing people that doing back-to-back -back 42s, I, I just said this thing like, it's possible and it's easy, right? So I just signed up for, for, for the 42 kilometer race. And yeah, when they showed up, starting line, first five kilometers, I was done and out. Then I just started walking and yeah, long story short, I finished in six hours, 23 minutes. And when I got there, there was no one. I just became emotional there because, I mean, who finishes a marathon in six hours, 23 years? So, you know, kind of felt like people left me and, you know. So from then on, I started training so hard that the following year, I went back and I did it in three hours, 30. Hi there. All right, thank you. That's great. Just the one bottle. And 9.1k to the next one. Then. All right, perfect. Okay, thanks guys. Dude, Appreciate bye -bye. it. See ya. All right, checkpoint one. Uh, we're at about 9k, filled up the one bottle that I drank so far. I have 800 ml bottles and we are required to leave each checkpoint with a liter and a half. I do have a bladder though, and I'm just keeping empty in the back of my pack. That would give me an extra liter and a half if I need to, uh, if it starts to get really hot. second aid station up ahead already. We're at close to 18 kilometers. Nice. Thank you, hello. Okay. Well, I'm through checkpoint two, filled up my bottles again. It's getting a little bit warmer, but not too bad. I'm still running well within myself, taking it pretty easy, trying to go to a sustainable pace.
like being on a different planet. So we're running along this road now. It's mostly soft sand and it really takes a lot of energy out of you. It saps your energy, kind of like running in snow. You know, it taxes your stabilizer muscles and your hips. And so you really have to think about trying to run efficiently whenever possible, kind of looking for the higher ground where there's maybe some more compact uh, clay. And running in this stuff really adds up after a while. Wow. The next aid station is up here. And I've been finishing with about 500 mils left of my 1.5, so I think that's good. It's a healthy margin. Wouldn't want to have any less rolling into an aid station. Basically what I do is as soon as I spot it, I try to chug the rest of my, my water and then come in with empty bottles, get them filled up, and then I can just keep moving. Hey there. Awesome. So cool. this That's it up there. Nice work. So that was a lot of fun. I think I'd call that day a success. Um, I didn't run too hard, but I definitely did run pretty much every step aside from a few punchy climbs. Um, trying to get kind of feel for the heat and for my pack. And my feet look like they're in good shape, no blisters. Um, I did tape them up because I haven't actually run on these shoes yet. And I was worried I might get pressure from the gaiters and possibly from the ripstop upper, but no, it looks good. So now it's time for a recovery shake and a nap. For me to be standing on the starting line today, I, I just completed my goal, you know, because I, I challenged myself already. A lot of people would, they, they want the end result, they want the 10 kilometers, they want the 50 kilometers, but it's not about the 50 kilometers. It's about you waking up and showing up, you know. It's, it's about those small steps that you take every morning to say, okay, I've done one kilometer and you're proud of it. That's how you, you build, lay a brick every day. After losing weight, and I feel like, you know what, I can take, take up more challenges. And there's a lot about, you know, forgiving yourself. 
that is involved. You, know, you learn to forgive yourself as you run and you become free. But above everything, I would say, you know, there is a lot that is involved in running because you can't run for five kilometers and you don't plan for it. So that small concept has, to, has a lot to do with planning for the future. You know, in, in general, as, as human beings, we, we, we tend to think back and what happened, you know, but with running, you, you're forever thinking forward. How's my electrolytes? Do I need more water? Do I need, you know, it just teaches you to think forward and there's a lot of plans that come when you run. Be it business, be it family, be it, you know, at school. You know, those are the main benefits that, I, that, that are associated with, uh, with running and all. on the next episode of Racing Namibia. Well, it's the morning of day two. We're at camp two here. And you know, the second day can sometimes be the hardest in something like this. Ooh, it's starting to get really hot. 